Run, Forrest, run. All right, I'm switching us over. Nice. feel like that's an excuse. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this extra super special, wonderful 100th episode of Two Nerds, One Quest. I am your host and DM, JC Dittmer, here with these three nerds, because math is hard, and oh my god, we made it back-to-back -back weeks, Tom Norman. How's it going, I'm buddy? Thrilled. I'm thrilled. <laughs> I haven't been this excited since we started episode one. Oh, yeah, and and from the sounds of things we may be back to back to back like next week might happen yeah nope no oh i'm i'm in madison i'm i got my hopes. I'm oh maybe i'll have to do something with these we'll find snooker and yan something to do Let's see if i can figure that yeah, out right. that man right there wearing the ghost shirt getting amped for the concert in gb wisconsin was one ryan crixus kukta Although he's about as far away from GB as you could get in a single day right now via car. <laughs> on, an, on an Iowa road trip, I wouldn't want to go any farther than this. The weather is not ideal, but I'll tell you, cozy up with us this morning. Let's do some D&D. That sounds good. And that, that last man there adjusting his camera sitting in the Lazy Dragon is the Lazy Dragon. <laughs> One, Jeff Jacob Williams. How you doing this morning, bud? Good, good. Having a, having a wonderful morning. I, it was funny because this morning I got up and I thought, oh man, I'm so far ahead. I'm, I've got plenty of time. And then I remembered we started at 8.30, not 9. So I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. What happens yeah. when you don't do this for a while? Yeah. Pinch oh. it off. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, got, I got the bus schedule for my kids this year. They're going to be upset. They got to be to the bus stop 25 minutes earlier than they did last year. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Welcome to the party. On the plus side, they get home 25 minutes earlier, so they may be happier about that. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. They don't know yet. They'll find out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! Guess what? I got the bus letter. Oh. All right. Well, let's <laughs> hop into things, Jeff. You got some sort of recap for us, maybe a limerick? Yeah. Yeah. Last, uh, last episode, we uh, started off uh, rolling initiative. Uh, Jacob had to bring back Doug first and then start the ritual. Doug was kind of uh, stalling the, the bad guy before he could start it. Um, and uh, I think the most important thing we learned last week was that Doug used to poop on people. Um, let's see. Cri oh, Crixus' life hangs in the balance as he's making uh, death, thro death saving throws for an, a number of turns. Uh, finally, Jacob finishes his ritual, cures Crixus, who, who uh, barely made it. Uh, and then as soon as he... Uh, as soon as he wakes up, he runs away and uh, chases after Valine. So not not much help in the fight. Uh, Doug finishes the ritual and tries to come through, but the professor's uh, a little bit difficult. Uh, Tika then uh, is, grapples the the skull that we've been fighting and keeps him busy while uh, Doug and Jacob together can save Professor Scant in a small moment of comedy. There. Um, while this is all happening, the city begins to uh, shake and uh, seemingly break free and ice falling from the ceiling. Um, uh, so, uh, and then everyone's kind of chasing into the building. Doug flies in. Uh, Crixus makes it all the way through what we find is a giant ballroom full of uh, people partying. Uh, Crixus makes it through. Doug's halfway flying through. Jacob's at the door when uh, pretty much everyone falls prone and... Um, except for uh, Doug, who's flying, and Jacob sees what he's pro may or may not understand is the Ice Queen blasting that skull with ice before the episode ends last week. So that's where we are. And uh, a little less less specific limerick this week than, than usual. So uh, we showed that we all have the guts. The dice rolls on both sides were nuts. We passed this test, but there's no time to rest. As JC said, hold on to your butts. Didn't say that. You did. I did say that. I did say that. 
He said that, it. That, I did it. What what movie is that? Someone says, "Hold on." Is that? Oh, that's uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Yeah, that's right. Or, uh, um, yep, Samuel L. Jackson. Thank you. God bless America. I cannot remember a flipping name this morning. Me and Norm this morning couldn't come up with Chris Evans. <laughs> that's Captain America. I'm like Chris Pine. Pine? <laughs> <laughs> we literally it might also be in the lego movie right chris evans no hold on to your butts oh. recycled in the lego movie it's possible if you ask All my right. kids they'd remember it i have not seen the lego movie in a while but that movie is fantastic or it's awesome <laughs> everything about it is awesome um. <laughs> So, uh, a couple of questions. Uh, does yes. would, would be, based on their uh, based on the discussions that they've had, would Jacob have recognized that that individual was oral? I I would say no. I'm I'm going. You with are. Doug doesn't recognize it. He definitely would have talked about it, but I don't know that they would have gone into a description of what she looked like. But also, they Doug? exist in the world, right? Doug, this... Doug would know. Doug would know what she looks like, just based on the stories about her. Jacob, you have no fucking clue. You're from Eberron. Oh. Okay. I suppose if I'm traveling, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know I mean, travel if they would have... Growing up in the world, you would have heard about her. It's like hearing about Jesus or Buddha or... <laughs> like, it's one of those things. It's, it's yeah, it was bigger on that level of... Uh, campfire trails on the road if they would have or campfire yeah. story they would have or, or the um, <clears throat> Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or anything like that that w is just common knowledge to all of us and like here on earth it'd be like that for you well everyone okay. but you you have a whole different set of mm -hmm. like, you have Lady Elmaro and Lazar and a bunch of other people from your world that you would know who which they were we, and what they were. Which, if we go there, I'll have to study up. Me personally, not Jacob. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And then, uh, are we still initiativing to to keep the uh, action, or where are we? Well, so everybody's kind of. The combat with the demi lich is over. <laughs> mm hmm. You like the it? He shattered in the sky, and you see this crystalline feminine sharp edged creature step out from um, around a building what would you like to do um I would like to stand up first stand up and then uh probably uh let's see if I'm using this as a turn I would bonus action command Tika to try to go through the barrier which I'm not don't have high uh, hopes for. Yeah, TK hits the barrier real hard. Okay. Like she tries. I mean, she takes off full dead sprint. Have you seen a cat hit a glass pane window that's been first mm. thing or a bird? Yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> All right. Like, oh. uh, and I'm just gonna, I think, go in to keep up with the with my friends. Okay, so you um, push in. She walks slowly towards the barrier. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm going to leave that behind since I'm not, um, if, I, if I don't know who she is, I'm not going to be all that concerned about it. Okay. Are we still in, um, initiative? No. Initiative. Okay. We're out. Con the combat with that enemy is over. I just yeah. asked, I mean, well, Jacob's yeah. the one well, she can see. She doesn't recognize Jacob either. So yeah. like she's, Bro she's walking, she's looking for people. She, she may not even pursue you guys. Yeah, and if you're looking at them, oops, go ahead. Because she doesn't know who she just saw. She just knows, hey, they're on the inside of this barrier. Okay, cool. Yeah, so roughly speaking, if you've got the map up, I think Ryan is nearing uh, Y19J. Uh, Doug is probably somewhere around Y19B, somewhere in the middle yeah, there. right in the middle of those steps. Jacob just came in by A. So, if, if people are looking at the map. All yep, right. That's what I so, you come into that room, you come into that ballroom, and people are dancing. Look at me, I'm dancing. But it's not like that. It's like all, like, waltzy ballroom gallery type stuff. Uh, 
what would you like to do? You do feel the whole of the city. Like, there's still, like, sounds of rock and ice falling. Every once in a while, you hear just, like, a tremendous, like, <clears throat> as something hits the barrier outside of this tower. Um, yeah, I would be just trying to catch up with the other two. So, but you see Doug. You you walk up through there into the ballroom. You see Doug. Doug's in the middle of this ballroom. What? You guys both see Crixus okay. far down a hall. That was my next question: Is do I actually see Crixus, or is he? Because I know he kind of knelt down by the stairs up there. Crixus, yeah, I think Crixus is at the door. I am. I am trying to get within eyesight of Valine, so I'm continuing to move forward through the crowd and up it. I believe there's a staircase. Is that it's it's a tunnel here? That dark area, white nineteen I. It's like a tunnel. Um, actually, when it's a seven foot tall. Uh, oh wait a minute, no. <laughs> Sorry, that's not a tunnel. That's a bridge over a chasm. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's, that's what cool. that is. That's a little different. So, yeah. So, I am not moving at top speed. I am ambling slowly across the bridge, concerned about falling to my death. So, um, cursing the whole way. I'm actually going to stop you there. I forgot about this. You come running to the edge, you stop. And it's a chasm in front of you. You don't see a bridge. It's just a chasm in front of you. Uh, make a perception check, though. All right. This will probably be... It is only 12? 12. That, that's plenty. As you come to a stop, there is some, like, glitter or, like, like confetti on the floor from uh, the, the ball. And it kind of poofs out as you stop out onto this invisible surface and sits there. Yikes. It's Indiana Jones. And it get, kind of gives away like Indiana Jones when he tosses the dirt out onto the invisible bridge in the Last Crusade. Last Crusade? Last Crusade, yeah. Yep. Uh, that, that bridge is there. So I'd be slowly picking my way across the bridge, like picking one my step way. at a time, making sure my <laughs> foot has... has something underneath it at each step. You move step. about half speed across the bridge, uh, giving both Jacob and Doug time to catch up with you. Makes sense. Um, all the while, I'm yelling out for Valine. Um, say, let's talk about this. Don't do anything rash. You walk into they, Jacob and um, Doug catch up to you, and the three of you together walk into uh, Y19J. I'm flying. Or flying, okay. Your reflections dance over the mirrored surfaces in this chamber. There are 11 alcoves that extend from the walls like points of a star, each one narrowing to a niche where a gently glowing crystal is mounted five feet above the floor. The air in here, even more so as you step into this room, kind of hums with this uh, pent-up power. Um, suddenly, there it, it elevates even higher. It's a, on a different frequency level than the whole like city that you hear. And these crystals energize. And the light reflects off of these mirrors, all eventually creating this hologram this lit hologram, like laser light lit hologram in that circle before you. Um, wow. And a, a translucent bald man in a long purple gown stands before you and his smile, he, he, his face just kind of, it's very serious, breaks into a smile. Um, hello there. Can I help you? We're looking for a woman that came running through here. Who? The well, mage that went by terribly quickly. Yeah, yeah. She went, she went up. Would you like to follow her? Very much so. 
Ah, all right. Um, um, stop her, please. No, what, what, what she's attempting to do may ruin the city. What is she trying to do? It seems she is trying to return the city to the sky. I don't know that the city itself would handle that so well. Please stop her. Good day. And he kind of, he steps backwards, in, and it almost looks like he steps into, like, Homer Simpson stepping into the bushes. But as he leaves, there's kind of an archway illusion that is left in front of you for you to stand, step through. Hmm. All right, I'm going to I'm going to kind of stop my hovering and walk through. All right. Rixus just turns around, just takes a last look, kind of letting Jacob go through if he wants to first. You hear another <clears throat> as something hits the barrier outside. <laughs> Side note, did 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 Crixus actually see Oral as well? No, no. Crixus wouldn't have. He was way inside. He okay. was way deep inside. And I don't know. I don't think you did either. He was hitting bottom. Doug, I think Doug was inside before yeah. that happened too. Oh, that's right, because she was out, and you were the only one. Because if she, yeah, because if you were the only one, she was gonna see. She was gonna be the only one you could see. Okay. Yep. Um. I'm going to, uh, as we walk through the door, I'm going to cast Detect Magic just to have it. Okay. Um, well, the door lights up like a motherfucker when you, <laughs> this is a magical portal. <laughs> mm, it's yeah. so it gets very bright as you step through this. Yeah, um, I figured that would happen. So right. I'll step. You step through. Uh, Crixus. Yeah, Crixus will take a look back, make sure nobody's following us across the bridge, and then I'll walk through as well. All right. You come out in another ovular room, Y19K. Um, this room is a giant hall glittering with frost. There are carvings decor that decorate the walls and long icicles hanging from the ceiling. There's a 10-foot radius dome of translucent ice that encloses the area from which you emerged. Um, there is a door, like, etched into that dome of ice that you could walk through to get out into the main area. Um, standing before you are in the like hovering by the doorway are two blade shaped patches of darkness like they almost seem to eat the light around them hovering in the air uh, one to each side of the double door that leads before you that's not closed but kind of hanging open mm. well, above the doorway okay. above the doorway there's a glowing green crystal um that is like roughly uh, it's about the size of a human hand um a fist just embedded in the wall like it was meant to be there like it wasn't thrown there by force or anything it was built into the wall there but it's glowing as well hmm. uh one thing i forgot to uh bring up you guys have enough hit points for whatever it is we're heading into or i most certainly do not <clears throat> I was gonna say while while we have time here, John, while there's a little bit of downtime not I don't wanna say downtime, <laughs> but while we're while we're walking. Yeah. I, I would do my um Oh, you're walking again? I need everyone to make a dexterity check. Yeah, because I walk As through something the hits the outside of the barrier. Do you have like a lay on hands or something? Yep, I was gonna use my entire pool of lay on hands. This is a dexterity check or save? Save, 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 and sorry. You're all within ten feet of me? So, plus four. Thirteen. Ten. Man, it won't stop. Uh, plus four, twenty-two. Nice. Um, Jacob, you're fine. You maintain your feet. Uh, Doug, you stumble a bit and 
I assume you use your reaction to flap your wings and just kind of pick yourself up right so you don't fall instinctually. I would. Uh, Jacob, or Crixus, you do stumble into Jacob. He puts a steadying hand on you to hold you there. Uh, Very nice. And I am trying to figure out what I did not prep this. <laughs> I missed this one. So. Uh, oops. All right. So, yeah, this, you're going to cast your lay on hands, you said? Or something. Dumping all your points in. Norm? Doug? Doug, uh, Doug yes. You have... Yep. I, I'm sorry. I was looking at something else. I'm, I'm completely full, so I don't need anything. Yeah, I used I, I gave myself 45. I used literally all my entire pool. Ooh. Okay. All right. So, I was, so then I'm going to need to cure my own wounds is that true sounds like it so yeah i was at 10 hit points <laughs> i was i was normal do that do uh i'll do a third level cure wounds at the casting of the magic um both those shapes that are hovering in the sky in and point towards you uh, threateningly. Alright, are they um, detect magic is 30 feet, are they within 30 feet of us? Oh yeah, and yes they are magic. <clears throat> so I'm, they're giving off some kind of a okay, and is the crystal magic? Ah, uh, the crystal. Seems like it would be like a uh... yeah. Um... Yeah, the the crystal is magic, and, and not only is the crystal magic, but it is um, it's giving off an aura around the door in front of you. Mm. Like like a barrier is set up on that door. All right. Well, um, I summoned Tika once already today, so I have to use a leveled spell to bring her back. I'm a, I think. Uh, unless you want to sacrifice your ferret or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to... Don't you touch my friend. You're a rat. All right. Ferret. I'll Please. use a... I'll use a first level spell to summon Tika. And okay. um, I will have her be uh, lightning. Lightning? Okay. Yeah. And then I will have her walk slowly towards the door and see what happens. Um, when it gets within five feet of one of these blades, because it will have to get in five feet of one of them to go to the door, uh, the mm. blade swings at her. Mm. Eleven hit her. No. Alright, then we need to roll initiative. then. Alright, here we go. That's funny. I rolled double 19s. Feel a little bad for you guys. You I, feel <laughs> really, I feel really bad for you guys. That's not great. Because you all rolled like 20, 19, and 22 is phenomenal initiatives. They rolled a 23. <laughs> Dick. Everybody got up early. This. It's random. <laughs> So it is the Blades, Jacob, Crixus, then Doug. I mean, they've been trained to watch for us, it sounds like, so they were ready. Yep. So uh, the Blade is going to swing a second time at Tika. Um, that one is a nine. <laughs> Miss. Uh, and then the other Blade is going to swing at her as well. Move up towards her and swing at her, which is a 23. That'll hit. That'll hit. Alright. Um, um, actually, 
What was the die roll? Where's my log? The die roll was a 17. Okay, good. All right, then it, it takes, Tika takes 16 points of force damage. All right. The one on the right. That was A, or that was B. So Jacob, they both swung at Tika. And these are, do they look like they're actual swords or like they're... They uh, look like they're a shadow. Like it's okay. it's a void in the so shape not, of a sword. So not Doesn't metal. look like metal, no. It, it's... Alright, um... Let's see. Action, I will... I'm trying to see how they react. I will attempt to chill touch and just see what happens. Chill touch? Okay. Which is neither cold nor a melee spell. Uh-oh, that's not... Oh, maybe. Nope. Ten? I'm assuming Ten misses. Ten misses. Okay. Uh, and then I will... I will use my bonus action to command Tika to uh, make an attack on the one uh, left or right. The, the the one that hit her. Okay, that's B. B and is the right hand one. A is the left hand one. Well, that's better than mine. Uh, Twenty one to hit. That does hit. Okay. Does uh, lightning damage make a difference? Uh, lightning damage does not make a difference. Okay, then it's a total of 12 damage 12 from damages. lightning. All right, 12 damages from lightning. And I'm just going to maintain a, or I'm going to, I'm actually going to step back and let the melee fighters get involved. All right. That moves us to... It's for me and Tika. Crixus, you see Jacob kind of hold up his hand and, like... Nothing happens, and then he, he kind of curses and shakes his hand a little bit and commands Tika to go attack, and Tika goes in and attacks the one on the right. So, <clears throat> um, Crixus will then also get in kind of next to our little dragonling friend, and, and uh, so I'm going to attack with my hand axe. Are you putting yourself the... in between the two of them, or are you going around to the other side of Tika? I'm going to go around to the other side, basically, almost okay. in the On the, the outside middle. of... You yeah. want to be in between the two swords, or do you want to be on the I outside? I actually do want to be in between the two okay. swords. All right, cool. So you intent. move in right next to the door. I'll make a perception check to me, or to me, for me, as you guys hear something else hit the structure outside. FYI. Around 15? Between 15, two... Yeah. Between Two Swords is a terrible porn title. <laughs> <laughs> Would make a great show title, though. Um, mm -hmm. The As you step in between the two swords, the crystal, the green crystal on the door, flickers. And in that moment, you notice something flicker on the doorway, too, like the barrier flickers with the impact of whatever hit it. Like it was almost shorting out. Uh, okay, so you step into place there between the two swords. You got your hand axe out. You want to do what? I am just going to attack at the right side, the one that has already taken some damage. All right. Final Fantasy rules. 16 to hit. Yep, that hits. And nine damage. Nine damage. This is a magical weapon, correct? It is correct, okay. yes. Making sure. All right. Nine damage. And then, and then uh, I'm going to just yell out, we don't have time for this, S-H-I-T. And then uh, my turn's over. You wouldn't actually right. say shit? Yeah, I mean, any, I would is, say. Is, is that a crick? He would. Thing? He's at his in-law's house, though. Oh, that's right. He's <laughs> <laughs> <Just being> proper. <laughs> we don't have time for this shit. We don't have time for spelling out words. <laughs> that's... We don't have time for spelling out words. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Doug. that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Nope, I got it. 
All right, so it's my my turn. Yeah. All right, and this yes, is yes, is. this is a dumb question because I might have missed it. Where on the map um, are these two swords? Is it the northern part where we're trying to get up to Y nineteen K? Southern part. No, southern part of Y nineteen K. You see that double door? Yep. That's the door that Crixus is standing in front of right now. There's a sword on each side of him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the okay. That's the spot I was thinking. Yeah. Good deal. All right. Yep. I just wanted to be sure. Um, I will get up next to so Crixus is between the two swords and Tika is in front of the one to the right to the you're right, right. okay yep. so I will get in front of the one to the left okay and I will do blinding smite Ooh. Uh, as a bonus action okay uh, the next time you hit a creature with melee weapon uh, 3d8 radiant damage hmm. so I'm going to Attack. Does it add the condition blinded as well then? Uh, well, <laughs> if it connects, I would assume maybe. Yeah, blinded, blinded. until the spell ends. Uh, uh, concentration up to a minute. Okay, cool. Go ahead and I swing. Mean, can swords be blinded? <laughs> we'll find out. Does sixteen yeah. hit? Sixteen does hit. Oof. All right. So seven plus seven plus eight is fifteen damages. Fifteen damages. Um, it swings around to its point to you, almost as if it doesn't have eyes to be blinded, and realizes where you are still. So no, can't okay, be blinded. It's well, immune to being blinded because it I, does not have eyes. I assumed. Um, I'll take my second. My second swing. Does radiant damage matter? Um, radiant damage does not matter. Okay. That looks so, like a good hit. Yeah, 23 to hit. Oh, absolutely. Ooh, nice. Max dam. Uh, 10. 10 damages. 10 damages. Yeehaw. And that'll... That'll be my uh, turn. I'll prop my shield up and kind of bang it and like come on you fucker the whole room shifts I need a dexterity saving throw from the three of you actually Doug I probably don't need one from you because well no I do because you were an initiative and you'll have to use your reaction to do it now if you want to flap your wings and yep. stay on your feet so I'm at 11 15 15's good or wait 19 um, I add plus four. I'm 19. poor would you oh, yeah, say that I, I'm? Would you say that I'm more than ten feet away from Doug? Um, I think I might be. Uh, yeah. It was a twelve. It's either a twelve or a sixteen. Probably a twelve then. Twelve, yeah. Um, you stumble and you fall onto your backside as this okay. room shifted. Um, I had an eleven. I would. I would. I would use my reaction to steady myself. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so you you use your reaction with your wings to mm -hmm. kind of pop yourself up in the air and set yourself down again. Um, they're like little, they're like those little uh, golf bag sticks. When you set the golf bag down, they. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking you 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 slide to the side and instead of like falling, you just go and get yourself off the ground and then just kind of settle down again as it. Yeah, settles back into place is what I, I mean, was. Thinking, but I do too. like the golf bag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seems like a party trick. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. And, and that's I... how we earned the name tripod. Yep, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, that that blade turns face straight at you. And did not like being hit uh by you in the way you did it. So it is swinging as it carves an arc through you. Um, oh shit, and crits. Because why not? Uh, yeah. Because yeah, the rules haven't changed yet. Holy shit, really? Ah! Holy shit, really? God. That's... Did I just cool get blasted into that. oblivion? I'm waiting for to calculate the number. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> There's so many dice. 71 points of force damage. Did you say 71? 
71 points of force damage. You raise your shield up in that moment to block that, and it pushes you all the way against the back wall. And as you're soaring through the air, the mist, the frost on your shield leaves your shield and with a supernatural speed surrounds your body to the back side of you and essentially creates a snow pile on your back that when you hit the back wall it goes boop, and the snow kind of soars everywhere and tinkles down to the ground just softly laying upon you you have one hit point Thanks, Aaron. On. Oof. <sighs> wow. Aaron, Aaron's the best. Well, D12 is no joke. <laughs> gotcha. Mm. On, on an 18 or higher <laughs> on the die, it, it goes from 4D12 to 12D12. Stop, right, man. So no messing around then. All right, so Doug's behind me now. Um, yeah, Doug's behind you now. The living, the other living blade goes after Tika. And that is who? That is a hit with a 23? Yep. I would assume, because she's less than... She's, about, she's 18, I think. 32 points of force damage. Oh, she's still up, but not that uh, much. That's, that's the 40 12. <laughs> you guys are realizing these things are tearing through you. That either the better idea may be to try and disable or just run <laughs> something. <clears throat> yeah. Jacob, it is your turn. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make a connection with that that gem in the doors, um, and I am going to. I don't know if it's worth expending it, but just to make sure that it works, I'm gonna use my lightning bolt that I've been hanging on to, uh, one time shot, and I'm gonna aim it at that crystal. Okay. And I'm gonna try to shatter that crystal. It looked like it was already kind of. Question for Something you. wrong with it. Yes. Would you like to position yourself to catch one of these swords as well? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. As, can you tell I've never cast lightning bolt as a player before? <laughs> it is a straight uh, line yes. spell. I would, I would like to do that. Just so seems something like Jacob would understand to do that. <laughs> and then... Yeah, uh, dexterity so, saving throw for for the, the sword. Um, which side did you want to go to? I'll, uh, I don't want to hit my friend, so I will go to the left side. To the left side? Okay. And dexterity saving through. 22. It'll take uh, half. Yeah. All right, go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, let's see, 8d6. Oh, that looks cool on screen. Let's hope they end up in a good... Oh, oh yeah. 12 looks pretty cool on screen too i'll say all right Ooh. so 20, 29 for the door thing and uh half would be 14 for the 14 for the one by tika okay that one is bloodied just so you're and then, and then i will uh command tika to attack okay. and i will move i will use my movement to stand back up and uh if i can get towards i want to get closer to doug to make sure he's okay right <laughs> the lightning on. the lightning bolt rips through the sword like you see it actually hit the tip of it and arc out the back uh the pommel of it and up and jumps and hits that crystal uh the crystal shatters and that barrier that you notice there before falls it's no longer flickering it is gone there are doors there still that are kind of 
swing it open a little bit. All right. Well, I unlocked the doors, maybe. Uh, and then uh, for Tika's turn, Tika, I will have her continue to bite the same one. Okay. Wow, that didn't roll at all. Uh, dirty 20. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. And a three, and a three, and a plus three is nine. Niner. Nine damages. That one really is not looking so hot. And that... Uh, uh, that's it for me. All right. Crixus, this lightning bolt arched through and hit the crystal and shattered it above your head. Uh, you do notice the barrier fall on the door, and there is a way through with, that you don't feel is threatening. All right, so I'm going to first channel Divinity with my action okay. and heal up to half or 30 hit points, whatever is first, on Doug. Okay. Doug, you get 30 hit points from a channel Divinity. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna use a bonus action and I'll cast um, Shield of Faith on myself to okay. give myself two extra AC. And then I'm gonna navigate through the door if I can. Alright. So yeah, you give yourself the AC and you move through the door. Um, they both get swing at you. Uh, 14. It's not hit. And a... 15. Does not hit. You've taken both the reactions away from them, so they can no longer AO this round. It's important information, Norm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and you move 30 feet into the next room. Uh, you come face to face with a wall that has eight doors on it. Each door is marked with a different arcane symbol overhead. Um, and there's something etched in the wall in Draconic. And I don't think you're the one that speaks Draconic, so but you recognize the writing at this point. You would assume, right. based on the markings, that they're probably the words that go along that, like, label the school of magic. What you would Perfect. probably assume. Yeah, and, and as I look around, like, I recognize some of those symbols as we saw them in that, like, chapel area, so. Okay. And that's my turn. Actually, I need a spell save. Or a, a, a I need a... I don't know if I have dice for a spell save. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I gotta figure out what the save is. I do need a save from you, though. Roll a d20 and make up a number. I need a con save from you, Crixus, as you roll through. Be cooler if it was a wisdom saving throw. Well, it's not <laughs> ideal. It is a two. Okay. That is not ideal. So you mm. step through... Um, As you step through the um, doorway and you get into this room, you get into that just far enough to see the wall and you are slowing down and your body's not... Like, you want to move, <clears throat> but you are freezing in place slowly and eventually come to a stop and you can't move. And you're stuck there. <laughs> mm. uh, Doug, uh, you're on the far wall. You move, neither one of you saw exactly what happened. <laughs> uh Doug, it is your turn. Alright, so I get thirty feet of movement, huh? Is is that gonna get me through the door? You could double he, well maybe does he need to stand up? Does he need to stand up first or was he still upright? You're gonna need to double move to get through. Um He was upright. I'm gonna say he's upright. I didn't say he was prone. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say, oh boy. I I'm going to put my shield in front of me, yell "My rain, blood beak," and charge through with my double move. 
perfect. You go right through the swords. The swords both swung at Crixus. As you pour through, you notice Crixus is kind of standing there ahead of you, kind of frozen in position like he was running. <laughs> Looks a little weird. Um, I'm going to... Can, can I free action and say, Crixus, now's not the time to pretend you're a mime. Absolutely. <clears throat> the first sword is going to swing at Tika. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is a 23 to hit. Yes. It doesn't matter. She's She had seven hit points left, so yeah. she's out. It's going to be uh, 32 <laughs> damage. Yeah. Well, shit. Holy hell. <clears throat> it was poof. All that, right. I'm more, the other sword I'm more, turns towards that, you, Jacob. Um, all right. I'm more than 10 feet, probably more like 15 feet away. So I don't yeah, know if it's going to. It, it moves up to you. Okay. It has a flight speed of 30. So it glides over to you and it's going to swing it. Uh -huh. Sure. All my friends made him angry. 13? Uh, no. No. So it's like, go. and it comes up aggressively. Like it turns itself sideways and is like flat, like it's going to slash and it slashes. But it telegraphed that move too much and you, you just see it. You're used to fighting people with swords. This isn't much different. And you see it telegraph that move and you're like, oh, crap. Okay. Shh. And it slices right over the top of your head as you wiggle your way out of the way. It is your turn. All right. Um, did did Doug make it past Crixus or just two Crixus? Two Crixus. Two Crixus. Okay. And he didn't. He didn't he slow down. Anything. Nope. He didn't slow down. All right. Uh, okay. Then I will. Um. Let's see. I've got, uh, yeah. All right. I'm gonna. Um. I'll use. I'll take the dodge action. Or, uh, I'm sorry. Disengage. I will disengage, and I will. Uh, 35 feet walking speed. All right. To them or you get to the other side of the door. You see on the floor as you go by. Um, <laughs> there's a tile that is has like a magical essence around it that had been dispelled or not dispelled mm -hmm. but a, expelled from it there's like residual magic around this one tile uh can i bonus action close the doors yeah or sure. is that sure i absolutely. would like to close the doors behind me okay swords uh, lack opposable thumbs uh, feel pretty mm -hmm. safe. <laughs> fair. that, is, so, that yeah, is fair let's do that <laughs> So you close the doors behind you. The room is silent. You walk up to Doug. We're out of initiative. You walk over to Doug, who's looking at Crixus, who is frozen in place. Crixus, I uh, need a constitution saving throw from you. Can I see with the detect magic if there's um, still a magic on him, or if it was if he just got affected by something? Um, you can tell that there's a magic effect on him. Okay. On there's up. a magic effect on him. I'll tell Doug. Six. Six. You get as, you're, as you're observing him, you notice, like, um, I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones at all, but Shireen, the little girl that had, like, the scale, the stone scale face, like, that is starting to creep up the side of Crixus's neck. Like a mm. pattern like that. Well, all right. I would like. Uh, I can. I can detect magic. I can't do anything about that. I don't think. Soft. I can cast. Uh, remove curse. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt. I'm I not cannot sure cast remove curse because those slots are. Shit. Those slots are already used. Um, oh, I have something that gets me stuck. You can use a higher. You can always use a higher slot for mm -hmm. uh, a lower level spell if you need to. I mean, that would be cool if I had fourth level spells. If that's a third level. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, cool idea, bro. But I have a way to get spells back. You have a way to get spells back, you sorcerer. I think it's during a rest, though. Oh, spell slots. Yeah, during a rest. 
Crixus doesn't seem to be going anywhere fast. Shit. <laughs> nope, it's it's Harness Divine Power. Uh, it says you can expend a use of your channel divinity to fuel your spells. As a bonus action, you touch your holy symbol, utter a prayer, and regain one expended spell slot, which can be no higher than level two. Oh. Mm. So, yes, mm. it would work. It's not the right level, though. Yes, correct. <laughs> All right. Uh, just... <laughs> All right. Um, Jacob's wearing gloves, so maybe uh, he will. I'm gonna try to pull, uh, and I'll say, Doug, can you help me? And I'll try to pull, pull him through the area just in case it's like an area of effect kind of thing, and try to get him just further away from that tile. Yeah, and I. Would, that's the only thing I can do. I would help you with that. Okay, the two of you make a strength check, or one of you at advantage. Uh, uh I have a minus one. Oh, well, I'll do it at advantage. <laughs> <laughs> you are the beefcake. 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 I rolled a one and a two, so eight. Oh, that was that was a save. Oh, that was a save. You're right. Ha. Okay. Okay. Take the uh, count. Let's go ahead and roll it. <laughs> Strength check. There we go. That's better. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, Crixus. Um, and when you pull him, he doesn't move at all. It's like pulling a statue. Um, but he slides along the floor. It's icy, and you're able to pull him along on his feet. Uh, Crixus, make a constitution saving throw for me. I recommend you make it this time. Nine. <laughs> well, plus four is 13. 13. Yeah. Uh, that stone condition creeps up over like half of his face. He stops breathing like you stop notice the rise and fall of his chest. Hard when the cleric gets hit with the curse. Yeah. Um we have any all right uh is everything that he's carrying also changing no just he him. has okay um i'm gonna he look through his bag of for vitality oh uh, yeah i'm gonna look in his bag for anything a potion okay what's in your bag there Crixus? i have a potion of vitality which removes any disease or poison affecting me okay <laughs> i'm not sure if that would hit the sweet spot. I mean, I'm not a cleric, so I probably would try it. You try it. Yeah. I have the alchemy jug. I'm not sure if there's something in there. No, it's mostly unless we need mayonnaise. No. <laughs> Can I hellish it's rebuke it away? Mostly I eat that too. I'd be careful with hellish rebuke right now. <laughs> oh, you need to be damaged in order to get hellish rebuke them. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I know it's probably more than it, or probably more expensive or more valuable than, and it's probably not going to work, but I would dump the potion of vitality, vitality. in his mouth. In his mouth. Um, it's the only... You, I mean, you dump the potion of vitality in his mouth. Um, when you do so, the the surface of his face that is, like, turning to stone kind of recedes and that that stone look recedes but he's still stuck in place there yeah uh, Any, anything else you're, you're you're a paladin right you got powers you got things i, I sure do um, I'm just going to keep digging through his all my right of hands into me. What? Your lay on hands would have been, but you don't have any hit points left. Would yeah. It? Five points of lay on hands could have removed uh, something. I think I forget what that how that works specifically, but uh, um, oh, he seems either to have cure a disease or neutralize a poison. Yeah, he's stopped turning to stone at least but he's not moving yet um i am going to bless him okay 
so that uh, let's hear do do do. Uh, the target can roll a d4 and add the number of the roll to the attack roll or saving throw. So on top of my plus four, I'm giving him, he'll also have a d4 to roll. Okay. If he has to make that one. Okay. Yeah, well, he, he does. It's probably right about now, after you cast Blast. <laughs> Constitution saving throw, Crixus. So you have plus, your Constitution save, plus four from him, plus a d4. 17 plus 4 is 21. There plus is a D4 if I need it. You notice that his his breathing has returned. He's still not moving, but he's breathing again. Where he had stopped breathing as that stone started crossing his face. Uh that whatever you did work, can you do it again? Is Crixus able to use a spell on himself at this point? Uh, if it's non-verbal, non-somatic, and non-material, touch like, spell. It's a touch spell. Do you, does it? What components does it require? Because you can't move your arms, and you can't speak. Good question. Yeah, it's it probably requires. I, mean, I do have. <laughs> I do have uh, remove curse. It does it require it material verbal. component? It's verbal. It's verbal and somatic. Verbal and somatic. Oh, it's verbal and somatic. So now you aren't going to be able to... Like, you understand in this moment that you might be able to, but you need to use your hands. Like, it is an awful situation in your head right now because you realize something is fighting your body and you may lose this fight, but you know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like being buried alive Makes almost. Sense. Mm, not pleasant. Can you, can, Doug, can you do that again? It's it's a concentration sure. spell. He didn't use it, so he can use it in his next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Jacob doesn't understand yeah, what I you do. I don't know that. <laughs> so yeah. you cast magic and went, it's working, it's working, keep doing it. I, I, I will kind of put a hand on Jacob and say, he will work in due time. Because I'm, I'm kind of waiting for the same thing. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to kick in. Hey, Crixus, make another constitution saving throw. You do have the bonus from standing next to Doug and still the a blessing play? from him. Oh, that's good. 21. Another deep breath that you notice from him, and he almost vocalizes, almost like he's trying to say something, but it's just like a passage of air. Like, <sighs> oil can. Kind of, except he can't even move to get the. Uh, it's more like. Uh. I'm going to get right in his face, and I'm going to just kind of thunderclap his cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead and make an unarmed strike. <laughs> uh. What's that, Crixus? Claudia is your sister? Mm-mm. Uh, <laughs> Does 12 hit him? <laughs> 12? Yeah. yeah, he's an inanimate object right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's go ahead and roll the damage board, which is like one. Oh, it's, it's three. three. Yeah. I get three. I'm sorry. You take three points of bludgeoning damage, Crixus. <laughs> you're beginning to wonder about the competency of the friends you're keeping. But if he wakes up, Jake's going to be all about Doug slapping people. Uh -huh. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> you did the you did the magic, and then you slapped him. I need a constitution saving throw, Crixus. Waiting for the number to roll. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> oh. It Plus, is one. Uh, so plus four, six. plus plus six roll. total. Did you roll the die too as well? I'm I'm not sure that it makes. I don't know. Do you do you want? No, to I it mean, this? if I need a d4, I mean it could be up to ten, but sure. Roll the d4. Well, nine total. Nine. In striking him. And hitting him, the stone starts 
coming up over his face again to about the mid point. His breathing stops. He's slowly turning to stone before you. I don't think slapping him was the right idea. As you sit there, it continues to go over your face, and Crixus stands before you, frozen in place, having been turned to stone. Mm. The potion bought you another roll, <laughs> basically. Mm. You had the three failures, the potion so the, removed one of those. It was disease, and apparently. No, it's a mm. magic effect. It's a transmutation effect. Here's, here's a question I can ask uh, mm. that you may or may not answer. Mm-hmm. Um, are we able to take a long rest so then I can do remove curse? Yeah, you could take a long rest here if you want to. It might be... I don't know if it's too late for remove curse. And I I don't know know what a long... I don't know. A long rest is a long time. Do you get anything back on a short short rest from being uh oh i think is your warlock spells only first level or your warlock spell slots or how does that i don't know i've never been a warlock that's all right i am a warlock and i don't know um (laughs) i'm as so i'm gonna start to take a long rest but can I visually look around to see if there's anything that would that I can like shatter or break that maybe can fix this? Uh, looking looking before you, there are doors ahead of you. Um, each one of the doors, there's eight of them, uh, has a symbol above it representing a school of magic. Uh, and there is a etched inscription in Draconic below each one of the symbols. Yeah, Jacob, you can read Draconic, right? Yeah, I'll I'll read the, the, the Draconic. Uh, the Draconic says, Speak thy master's name and enter. All of them say that? Or that's Mm -hmm. there's just one? That's what's below each one. Mm. So who is the master of these schools of magic? Who is Crixus's master? Do we remember? I, I mean... I mean, these were here before Crixus got here. Do we know... Do Did we get the name of the Master of the Tower? Or is there a Master of the Tower? Uh, this tower? Yeah. Um, Ear of... Um, Erio Larthus. Is his name, and I remember you guys did get it because I tried to pronounce it. I'm like, God, this is a mouthful. Uh, at one point, you did get this. <clears throat> hmm. So, if each one says that, though, the, the <clears throat> question that I would wonder is: Is there a specific master for each school, or is it just the speak like the master thing? And Doug, did you say you're looking like you're starting to take a long rest? Yeah. Okay. Because if I can... Yeah. Because I'm kind of at a loss. I mean, just out of hope, I would yell oral really loud. 
And just pops this large object that hits the shield on the outside. Um, Jake, Jake could be like, I don't think now's the time for that, Doug. Well, I'm yelling out masters or powerful people right now. I don't know. Oh, 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 you meant like that ice queen you guys used to, were talking about. Yeah. Okay, never mind. No, I got it. There is a terrible <laughs> grinding sound, stone grinding sound as the whole city shifts again. Um, stone on stone and rubble crumbling away, you hear. And a... Uh, the next large object shakes the entire tower and is louder than it has been. And the entire tower itself becomes unsteady and it's kind of wavering. Mm, that's and not good. I don't know if you've ever been in a skyscraper on a windy day and the floor, you, it kind of moves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah, I don't like that. Now. I don't like that at all. Um, I don't know. I mean, Doug, uh, Valine's only been gone for, uh, I mean, what, like maybe 10, 15 minutes, maybe less. I don't know how long. I mean, most of our combats have been anyway. Uh, I mean, I don't think, a, I don't think, uh, you know, long rest is eight hours. I don't know that anything's going to be left eight hours from now. I think we either need to leave them behind or I, I mean, I don't have any solutions. I don't either. Um, if we're. If we're going to stop Valine, then uh, we got to do it now yeah. or or abandon the city and just get out of here. Technically, we could probably fix any... this in the bag of holding now, right? <laughs> uh, if he was in a different position, we might have to snap his arms off to get him in there now. But no, I mean, we could kind of start oh. a arm and wrap it over, right? That's going to take a hell of a dexterity check to do. Like a We have two bags of a dexterity check to do. What, ha what happens if we use two bags of holding, one on each arm, and go meet them in the middle? Is that bad? Probably. <laughs> you take half, I'll pick the other half. Professor would be very stunned to see. <laughs> oh, shit. And I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to... This is going to sound bad. I'm going to whip the professor out of the bag. Yeah. The professor out of the bag. Speaking of which, you still have my bag. It's about time you got me out of there. Oof. We're in a, we're in quite the bind here. Uh, uh -oh. he's, he's turned stone. to stone. Yes. Yeah. And we don't know what any of this shit means. Who, who, are, who are the masters of these doors? Oh, the map. Well, it's... Hi, Abjur Tar Taruth. Uh, let's see, it was Hi, Conjurer Damrith. Uh, Hi, Diviner Apius. And, well, the High Enchanter um, um, I I Ivira, I think was her name. Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just the teachers at the school. Oh, I'm going to start repeating those names. I can't, there's no way in hell I can repeat it right now to you, yeah. even though you just said yeah. it. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hi, Evoker Zatalus. <laughs> hey, does he, he runs through the entire list do you say every one of them and I'll repeat it after he does in hopes that the doors open um, when you go to the door um, it's unlocked after speaking the name you turn the knob and the door swings open um, I'm gonna and peek through has a vortex of glowing stars that kind of hangs in the middle of this chamber slowly rotating on its axis um, the constellations move uh, they cast radiant starlight across the walls there are eight high backed chairs in this room um, that seem to be bearing a different arcane symbol on each one of them um, they all face this Yasma of 
galaxy and stars that's rotating as the constellations move through here. Is there um, like dust and debris on the floor where maybe there's footprints to see where maybe Valine went? Yeah, you could actually pick up Valine's footprints through this room. Okay, and which way, generally speaking, did she go? Left, right, or center, or...? Um, she went straight through to... Oh, well, let's see. Hang on. Ooh, 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 ooh. She went through to... That's that, that's that. Sorry. Oh, there's a really <laughs> cool-ass picture of this. Um... I apologize. Um, I mean, we're still processing uh, mm -hmm. the potential loss of a friend, so take your time. Um, yeah. But, you know, in all due seriousness, I'm going to take anything valuable off of him that we might need. Okay. Uh, grab his bag. and so bag, of, bag of holding for sure. Um, anything else? I'm not going to take rations or any of that kind of stuff. Or weapons and armor don't seem like it makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you walk, you following, let's see, you grabbed Crixus's stuff and walked into the room looking for the footprints. Doug, you went into the room as well. Are you doing anything in that room? The, the room that Crixus is in or the vortex room? The vortex room. Um, I'm just looking around. I'm still looking for stuff that might help Crixus. So any potions, any vials, any spells okay. any anything uh the professor tells you that the spell was a transmutation spell um so you start finding the similar transmutation anywhere you can find it look at it and um uh and you're frantically digging, like both of you are trying to process this and yeah. like doug is going in a panic mode trying to find a solution and jabbering with Doug the professor back and forth Doug and I'll use Doug's um, magic uh, uh, help someone spell of slap face real quick and I will slap him in his face my strength is negative one so it doesn't matter if I hit or not um, and I'll be like Doug Doug Valine you do Valine's a wizard it doesn't hurt really but it's enough to... his feathers cushion to blow uh, Valine she could probably she can probably fix Crixus I don't know why she would want to but she's here somewhere that's the only thing we have. We gotta find her. One last question follow. for the professor. Would the prayer of healing help him? Prayer of healing? What's the prayer of healing? I'm not a very religious orb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> up to six creatures of your choice. A, I'm not a religious man myself, but he's an orb. <laughs> so I'm not a very religious orb. Uh, it's uh, just a healing yeah, it's a it's a healing spell. A bigger healing mm -hmm. spell. As far as I know, I mean, like, it couldn't hurt. It's just hit, just hit points. <clears throat> it might not work. I mean, if he is stoned, it's okay. A healing stone does not put stone back together. As far as I know, I don't understand much of divine magic, but that that much I do understand. Uh, okay, so what are your hit points at there, Genius? I'm, I'm full. Oh, you're full? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for battle. I'm, I'm, I've got everything that, that I, except for having Tika available, which okay. it's almost. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to, as I, I'm going to finally say, fine. Let's go get her. And as we move, I'm going to drink my potion of healing. I'm going to pull that out and drink potion of something, wherever it is. You drink, drink potion of healing? Uh, potion yes. of healing, a greater potion of healing. Okay. Go ahead and drink your greater potion of healing. Do you, need a, oops. Do, you need more hit, do you need more hit points? I, I can... I've got a couple of, couple of spells left. 
I do have a, a potion. greater potion of healing also. Might as well take it. I, I would probably take his greater potion yeah. of healing as well then. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if Valina's reasonable, we might not need it, but if she's not, we either have to force her or take her down. Because that is using that other potion of healing puts me up to 56 you, of 83. I was going to say, did you, did you add the, the bonus to it, whatever the greater gets? Mm hmm. Okay. It's greater 44. Yep, 44 plus, plus four. four. Okay. I have one regular potion of healing. I don't know if you, I mean, it's only 2d4 two, two plus two. Nah. But it might be the last potion we have. Yeah, save that just in case. In case I get down or whatever. If you go down, I have a spell also, that I can stabilize you. Also, I think none of us said we took off our masks, so I think I still have my dragon mask on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kirksus is a statue that's pretty badass with, like, the fox god mask on. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm wearing a plague doctor mask. Yikes. Um, it's horrifying. So follow the footprints. Follow, fine. follow the footprints forward. Um, and it, it leads to the edge of this uh, miasma. And you kind of look and it looks like she may have just stepped right into it. Um, Crixus. You've been standing there for what feels like forever. You feel a hand on your shoulder. Sexy hand. Hard to oh. say it's a gloved hand on your shoulder. And in the moment that you realize you feel a hand on your shoulder, you realize you're breathing. Did, did we just leave him in the dust? <laughs> uh, I mean, that... Mm, was it a cold hand? You turn around... I look and around? You, yeah. You can turn your head around. You turn your head around and see that this hand is attached um, to a body, a cloaked, heavily hooded body. You can see just the littlest bit of a feminine jawline underneath. And the hands reach up and pull a hood back. And Eliana looks at you and says, I knew you'd end up in trouble, old man. <laughs> and we'll stop there. Oh, 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 oh wow. Oh. Fucking transcendent. <laughs> All right, I oh, like that. Um, and that's kind of a... Uh, She's been trying to find you guys since the letter about Aaron. <laughs> she just finally oh. caught up to you. Badass. What? Uh oh, that has resurrection on you. <laughs> so, does that mean the barriers now? Well, well there's so you, many questions. You you are no longer petrified. Oh, we, right, well, I don't have a bag of holding anymore. Well, we definitely no. just robbed Crixus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, exactly. I, looking at your looking at your stuff, probably the bag of holding was basically the only thing I took. Yeah, and I think we're still in the next room, give or take. Well, we'll start. We're going to step with you guys, and whether or not you just like step through, you have no knowledge of what just happened with Crixus. But if you step into this miasma. I don't, know what to, I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> do on it for a, a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, on that note, <clears throat> I'm going to <clears throat> badass. do this and this and say that we are two nerds on quest. We are here Sunday mornings, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Most Sunday mornings, uh, summer is kind of rough, but we are coming to the end of that. And after next weekend, 
for the most part, I think we're probably going to be here most weekends. So it'd be pretty golden because all the holidays are over and a lot of the summer trips are done. Yep. I, Someone I, might be going to a Packers game here and again, but yeah. Yep. Um, How yeah. often do they play at noon on a Sunday though this year? I don't know. <laughs> Not that much. That's a good question. They're one yeah. of the better teams in the league. They don't get those games anymore. <laughs> The, the only one I can think of uh, that we may not be here for is the London game because that is like a 7.30 in the morning game. Yeah, yeah. So we may choose to yeah. watch, football. watch football. Maybe we'll have a live stream and we'll all watch the game together. Oh, I'd maybe. be into it. That'd be <laughs> kind of fun <laughs> to, to group watch the Packer game. <laughs> we would have an impromptu Talking 1265 episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, anyway, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Uh, join us. Uh, Patreon. Twitch.tv uh, slash Tom M. Norm. T-O-M-M-N-O-R-M. It is free to watch us live. It costs you nothing. Uh, and if you subscribe with your Twitch Prime subscription, that still costs you nothing and helps out the channel. So consider doing that. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, podcast drops for Patreon subscribers uh, Sundays, usually around noonish. Uh, podcast drops for the non Patreon people. Uh, the edited version with no pre and post show content uh, drops Monday mornings. Uh, get it wherever you get your podcast from. Rate us, review us, let us know how we're doing. Let us know if you're enjoying it. Just let us know. Uh, go to bit.ly slash our fun discord to join our discord. Talk to us. Uh, whenever you want, get free access to TBD. It's fun. You should. A belching you... dragon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, wow. for me, I like for Genius, for Crixus, Mr. Ghost, and DMJC. Hello. We'll catch you. Uh, well, some guys may catch you next week. Otherwise, we'll catch you proper in two weeks. Boom sound. Yeah. Chris, this is back, baby.